welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining me. This is the Garden Room Series and I'm doing something which I really enjoy and that is stud work. I've got a fair bit of stud work to do, but here's an exclusive for you. I have some material here. I've never used this material before. It's called True Stud and it's apparently going to make my job a lot easier because it's engineered to be nice and straight, nice and true and that is a real advantage when you're building anything from timber. So this is the material. I was lucky enough to go all the way up to Tilbury Docks to see it landed from the ship. It's come from Latvia and this is true stuff. So this is it. This is the place in London where that timber got landed, the true stud. It is a phenomenal place. I've never seen so much timber in all my life. I've seen it coming off the ship, onto the forklifts, put in a huge warehouse and a massive sort of yard, if you like. And it's been a real eye opener. And I've really enjoyed meeting the guys here, seeing the products and being educated on timber things I never knew about it. It looks exactly the same as any other material. However, this stuff is straight and true. How do they do it? Well, it's made from lots of short sections and they're all finger jointed together. It doesn't affect the strength of the material. In fact, it's probably stronger. Okay, so there we go. It's C24 as well. So it's graded and this is the material and I can't wait to use it because if you do carpentry and joinery, you get delivered a pack of timber. You know, if you've got a hundred pieces, 10 or 20 aren't gonna be good enough for doing straight studs. They're gonna have to be things that you can pull in and out and fix like noggins or heads and sole plates. I don't have that problem. I'm gonna get on and build this stub work. So the first job we have is obviously set everything out, which means put sole plates down. So we've got our existing raft. Or this is the raft here, the concrete raft, and we are going to put our sole plates down, directly fix them to that. Now we've got about 150 millimeters of insulation going on top of the raft, and then we've got a screed going on that. So we're coming up roughly 200 millimeters, okay? So that's roughly where you can see that counter button on the wall there. That's roughly about the height. So what we want is a sole plate at that level. So we're gonna run a timber sole plate all the way around. We're gonna put it on plastic shims. These are sort of plastic shims. There's no damp or moisture in this concrete, but it's kind of a psychological thing. I always like to have some sort of separation between timber and masonry. So we're gonna put them on there so they're like little feet. Then we're going to make um, a T-section, which is going to go on top and get our sole plate up to the right level. So it's a really nice detail. So we've got a bit of partitioning here. We've got a room that's sort of in this area, around the saw effectively. And then we've got a couple of small areas over here. We've got like a loo and we've got a shower and a little changing area for the little lap pool there. And then there's just like an open area, which is a bit like a relaxation area, which is where the tools are at the moment, okay? So, that's where we're at. We've got the timber stacked over there. We're gonna go from the timber to the saw to the floor. We're gonna fix and drill it down, concrete screws straight into the concrete, and it's gonna be brilliant. So with all stud work, you have to have a start point. In our case, we have a wall directly beneath this glue lamb beam. Indeed, when I designed the roof structure, we always factored in to have some support under this. So I can't move it. It's one of those decisions that you make as you're designing that you have to stick with. And it basically mirrors the section of wall underneath the glue lamb here. So instead of having the wall that we already built in here we designed this wall to be here it's like a division wall we had designed just a post underneath that position which is roughly around about two meters here but we didn't put the post in because we're going to build a full wall we are going to use the post however on the corner of the wall so the plaster comes in and the plaster comes in and it keeps that glue lamb theme you get all of the so for wherever you're traveling you're following a glue lamp beam, which is really nice. So we're using a quite a sophisticated self-leveling laser, which will give us a grid, okay? 
we've got one of the axes trained on the edge of the glue lamb. So this is our start point, this is our datum. We have then got a line projecting all the way down at 90 degrees and I've checked that off of our wall, external wall, and it's exactly parallel. So now I know that that is true and exactly where I want it. I'm gonna ping chalk lines over them and then we're gonna get the sole plates built and fitted in those positions. So Ed's cut all of the plastic shims here and what we're gonna do is attach those to the bottom. We'll probably just pin those straight to the bottom of the sole plate. We'll put the sole plate down and then we'll put a concrete screw all the way through and that will secure it. So that's the first job. Now we're able to run a continuous sole plate round. We're not breaking at doorways. We don't need to do that, so that's really nice detail. So the hardest job here is the first lot, getting all the first ones down, drilled, fixed, and then the next ones after that are absolutely like easy. So we can just whiz round and then we're building studs. I'll let you pull it tight, all right? Okay. Give it a couple, let me see it. Lovely. You can actually just chalk straight over your laser lines if you want, or pencil it on the floor or whatever you want. That's it. Excellent, that's the inside of the wall. So we can get rid of the laser now, and we can get those plates cut and measured and pretty much fixed. Right, I'm gonna get this one marked. So I'm just setting out the corner here. So I've made the sole plate, I've marked it out for a typical door. This door only needs to be narrow because it's kind of like the door to nip out of here into the shower room. There's already a door to come into this area from that side where the TV and the sofas are going, etc. So um, I've set the sole plate out. Now I'm doing a little bit of mathematics based on roofing actually to decide how far from the corner I have to cut those legs there to give me the exact space. So Ed's doing a calculation. Ed, if you can divide yep. 1.130 divided by 1.4142, 799, so 800 roughly. Okay, 0.799, round that up to 800. Okay, so that means I measure back along 800. So give me a measurement, 800 back from an imaginary corner if we was having a square room. Now the other way. And this is the way you can work out a 45 degree angle on a wall, start square, measure an equidistance across, that is 45 degrees, you can't go wrong. Yes, sometimes you, you can build it a little bit out, you can build it 40 degrees and 50 degrees around the other way, but then you try to start mitering, skirting around all the rest of it, nothing fits. So this is a lot nicer. So then we will try, carefully try that plate across longest edge to longest edge, and you shall find that it's gonna be somewhere exactly near it. And there you go. So you can see by the geometry never lies, the measure never lies. You can see that that line is directly over there and that line is directly over there. So I know that, uh, that gives me the length of this plate here that I need. It also gives me the length of that plate that I need as well. And we're gonna cut those off and get it all fixed in.
So we've got all of the sole plates in. Uh, we've got our sort of I-beam section in, which basically gets our proper sole plate up to the height it needs to be because we've got an insulation going all over this slab, underfloor heating pipes, etc. So we want the sole plate to be at the right level to catch the bottom of the plasterboard. And this is a really nice way of doing it. Um, gets it all straight up. Now you can stud all the way straight down, but then you've got to try and put a row of noggins around. Um, and sometimes it's a bit fiddly nailing a noggin close to the floor. This enables us to um, just get the whole thing done in one go. And it's super solid as well. Now this timber is really, really dry. They aim to get a moisture content of around about 15%, now which is quite low for softwoods. Um, so that means there's no shrinkage. So if you were stacking or making this section out of really wet timber from the timber merchant, the chances are it could shrink a little bit in its height. But it wouldn't really make a major amount of difference to your structure. So there we have it. That's the sole plates done. I've got some grounds in the ceiling up here. So there's two lots of grounds. There's a load of grounds which are going to be behind the plasterboard. And then there's my secondary grounds which are temporary which catch our head plate. I'll screw my head plate into that build my stud and then when I put my plasterboard in I can slide them out, put the plasterboard back in and then screw the actual stud through the plasterboard and into those OSB grounds which are at the right level behind the plasterboard. So that's it. There we go. So Ed's over here getting ready for the glue lamp corner post. He's made a key, making a housing in the sole plate there and then he's going to attempt to cut down the glue lamp and make it fit really nicely into there as well. So we're getting the stud work done. We've got our double sole plate, so we've got the one on the ground fixed to the concrete on the, on the um, plastic shims. Then we've got our one that runs on the upright, which takes our proper sole plate up to the right position. So when we come to a corner with stud work, we need to make sure we've got enough grounds for plasterboard in both directions. And you're always gonna use three studs here. You're gonna either have one here, you're gonna have one here, but then you need to have something to catch the inside of the plasterboard there, and the inside of the plasterboard there. What I like to do is actually use two studs together, fix them together, because studs can sometimes be out of straight. So sometimes by getting two out of straight ones and fixing the two together and making a right angled corner, you can make a really nice straight corner post. So what I'm doing here is I'm having a stud on the end, because this wall carries all the way up, but it forms an alcove at the front. So I need this stud in this position, but as I said, I could have it there as well. So I'm going to have one here, and then I'm going to fix one all the way up as well on the inside here, which gives me my grounds here, and it straightens up the stud here. So I've got one that I've made. We've got an angled or raking stud. So we've got, we've got a cut which is cut already on the top, and we've got this piece here. So this goes into the head plate. So this screws into the end of the head plate instead of trying to get up onto the head plate. So it's fixed all the way through with nails, so it pulls them nice and straight. I don't have a problem with straight here because this is true stud and it is incredibly straight. And then what we're doing is we're putting two bits in at once and we can push it into the head plate here, give it a little tap. And that gives us a really nice pre-made corner. Then we will have a stud on here. I could put that in at this point but actually it's quite a faff. This, and incidentally it only comes up so far because the head of this head of this wall is shorter. So that's basically it. Fix all that in now. Fill in this stud wall over here. Ed's getting on over there. He's basically forming this piece of stud work here. He's got his glue lamp ready to go in the corner. So he's doing a nice job over there. I'm gonna crack on over here. And that's it. We love a bit of stud work and true stud is the way to go. One of the things I really love about the True Stud product is the fact that there's no sorting or checking any of the lengths. We literally pick them up from the packs, 
cut them and get them fixed straight into the wall we're actually fixing a head plate here we're doing it from the above we're sliding our plasterboard in over the top so we can pretty much pre-prepare everything cut all the studs to one length and it is super quick so the amount of time that we're saving on this job by not having to sort through timbers it is incredible this job was so quick um, we're pretty quick at stud work anyway, but this job was so, so quick thanks to the True Stud product. So we use a noggin or solid bridging in partitioning and it does one or two things. It keeps everything nice and rigid and also provides you with a potential board joint. Okay, so in some countries, they always railroad their drywall or their plasterboards. And in some countries, indeed in the UK, we just go straight up the studs, especially in the case of metal positioning. It's always an upright board going round. So what I like to do is when I put my noggin through here is always have the center line one board width high off the finished floor level plus 10 mil. So I'll keep my boards up off the sort of screed level by 10 millimeters. So I know where my FFL is, it would be about here. So the plasterboard is caught at the bottom and then it comes up and if we're going sideways across the studs, that's exactly where we'd be. And then we'd go on again, you can see another one at the 1200 mark there as well. So that one would also serve if we were doing an upright board as well. So that would all follow through. So that's the basics. Now, all of these studs are also positioned at 400 centers to catch a plasterboard which is 1200 or just slightly underneath 1200 so when you put them up you can always get them to fit without gaining everywhere so we also have our stud set like that which it, which enables us to cut all of the noggins or the majority of them at the same size so the size would be if it's a 400 center or side to side 400 the gap in between is basically one stud thickness less. So if that's 46 mil, this noggin and all the others will be 354. So to do that, we've got, fortunately, we've got a nice chop saw set up here. We just screw a block on there and go bang, bang, and just cut them all, lay them all out on the floor. You'll see there's a few more to go in over here. They all get laid out. And the ones that we leave out and we measure in afterwards it would be this one here, the short one, which sort of gets you to the wall. And also, the one that gets you from there to a door lining edge because we'll put a straight edge on there at the point of putting the noggin in and we just direct measure or mark and that just means that our opening for our lining is really nice and true. So that's the noggins basically, it's a super simple job, an enjoyable job in fact, um, unless you decide you want to nail through your thumb, in which case it's not so enjoyable and that has happened before. So. Anyway, we won't go into that. So that's it. We're just at the end of the petitioning. A few more studs here to go in. Then I've got an interesting detail here where we're putting a high level shelf because of the glass. We want this to come underneath the glass and it will form a flat ceiling over the shower here, which is quite useful as well for fans, etc., and getting ducts out. Um, and then we're on to electrical first fixing. And the other good thing about a 1200 mil nogging is it's about the right size or the right height for your light switches. So it means that we can actually attach the switch back boxes with a simple notch to the noggins. So we're through our stud work now and we've got our sort of like relaxation areas and meditation areas, <laughs> shower, little changing area for the pool, Got all of our plasterboard here, which we're going to put up in a couple of days' time once we've got all the electrics in. And it's looking pretty good, I reckon. <laughs>